Well, this looks like it's gonna be one of the shorter clips in this LP. It's gonna be all grinding, but at least once it's done, we're gonna move on to the gym and then hit the road to the next town. At least Cerulean had more going for it than Pewter, since we had to fight our way to Bill's house. I just wish there was more to it than just, here's a ticket to something you don't know you need to prepare for the next town. But I suppose that would require more storytelling skill than what we've seen in this game so far. For some reason, I didn't recall grass types being resistant to electrics. I suppose that's good to know for when we finally reach Surge in uh, Vermilion. Not really sure the logic of that, though. S especially since it's not like grass types do super effective damage to electrics in return. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Now we find a Caterpie? Now? When a Butterfree wouldn't do us much if any good at this point anymore? Sure. I'm gonna do what I can to catch it, but I'm internally groaning at the fact that we didn't have one for the previous stadium tournament or for Brock's gym. And of course, I'm so much higher leveled than it than any that literally any of my conventional attacks would risk knocking the bastard out in one shot and prevent us from capturing him anyway. Again? We caught the bloody thing a bit too late for my liking. And since Blue Team already had a Mothra, this one is gonna be a flat Nothra. I know, not much of a joke, and it's kind of mean since it's not his fault then Pokemon Ready so annoyingly rare to find. But I was both laughing and groaning at the time I came up with it. Besides, the poor guy is gonna be stuck in the box for the entire game here. Okay, unless there are any other random Pokemon that pop up that I feel one way or another about capturing you, let's just keep on grinding out levels. Not that I can think of anything off the top of my head that might show up, though I certainly wouldn't mind getting a Vulpix or Growlithe this early in the game. Not that you can really call this early in the game anymore, considering just how many hours in we are at this point. Yeah, while Toy Maru is doing better against the Pidgeys when he has the first shot, I'm still not gonna get over the fact that Thunder Shock doesn't take them down in one bloody hit. Again, this is a series mascot, and that he's just completely underperforming against something he's supposed to have two advantages over level and type. It's just surprising to me. Yeah, this seems about as good a time as any for another bit of healing. Or... Or I could just decide to move someone else to the front and keep on grinding in this session for a bit longer. Huh. 
Well, it's certainly nice to see Neo ripping through the wild ones in this area with that kind of ease. Definitely didn't take nearly as long for him to become a genuine threat as it did for Takanobori. Right. Of course he can't get experience taken down Abra's now. So of course we run into two back to back because the game wants to taunt me at this point. At least we didn't get a third. That would have been ridiculous. <laughs> Never mind, it's just gotten ridiculous. Seriously, why is it when you're specifically looking for things, they're rare, but once you've stopped looking for them, they just keep on popping up like they're going out of style? Well, despite some bullshit, we're still leveling up at a good pace. Is the area past the bridge just not a good area to grind in this part of the game? Should I just go back to the patch of grass that's closest to Mount Moon? Hell, part of me is actually tempted to enter Mount Moon again, despite how annoying it was to navigate through. At least the Zubats would give us experience, while these Abras are just wasting our time just to be trolls at this point. Not that we have the option to just walk back to Mount Moon now. The only way to enter it is from the Pewter City side for some reason. Not really sure why they made it a one-way route, when it's not like there's all that much to tempt us to go backwards. Well, aside from my annoyance at some random things happening to us right now. I think that was the single longest period of time we've gone through grass without a random encounter going off. Is the game trying to tell me to stop grinding or something? Well, level 18 certainly didn't take long. Is there an Abra convention going on right now? If so, please tell me when it ends, so I can let you all disperse instead of continuing to keep running into you when neither of us are going to gain anything from this. I'm kind of surprised that Oddish isn't more common than this. You'd think a walking plant would be more common than birds that possibly feed off of it. But again, I'm probably not supposed to think too hard about logical things in this game above all the others since it is, after all, the skeleton that the rest of the franchise was built off of later. Of course, some of the other things that end up being Pokemon in later generations make little to no sense just by merely existing at all, much less at any kind of frequency. Right, up to level 19 with Neo. Very nice to see him grow up so fast. Still, he's not the only member of the team that needs to make the level 20 before we hit the next gym. Well, 
That's fine for getting us back to the center, but it doesn't change the fact that we're still gonna have to cross the bridge again to get back over there. Still, it's not like crossing the bridge when the footage is fast forward. It is all that excruciating, and hopefully, we'll be able to move to a relatively new environment when this clip is done. So that's got to be worth something. Though again, it's not like this game is all that many different environments it can pull off considering the graphical limitations. Here's hoping this is the final bit of uh, major grinding we're gonna have to see for a long while. Running over the same section of ground over and over in order to get as many random encounters as possible? It's a little on the mind-numbing side. Well, at least Nim's capable of gaining experience from Abra's, I suppose that's something. Yet, for some reason, Oddish can survive that rather brutal bite. Again, I kind of wish the game would give us some estimates on how likely it is for an attack to land and the approximate damage it's likely to cause if it hits. And great. Now I'm tempting myself to do some Fire Emblem games when we're done with this one. Anyway, now that Nim's evolved, it's back to Neo getting stronger. this into perspective, Confusion is one of the weaker Psychic attacks. Psybeam and the move just called Psychic put it to shame. Though I don't have a... Though I don't think they have a small percentage to cause the status effect to Confusion. Okay, why did I decide to go to the Pokemon Center after that? It certainly didn't look like anyone was tired yet from where I was sitting. Ah! So I entirely given up on, uh, Toimaru then, huh? Sorry, all you Pikachu fans, but he just doesn't tick enough of the boxes in my mind for me. Wait, I'm trying to bring Marble back back to the main team when we still have the Water Gym in our immediate future. What the hell am I thinking? And I'm retiring Mig to do it. Definitely a shame since uh, Mig was such a high scoring member of the team. Everyone give a great big hand to Mig, the highest scoring Pokemon that's going to be sitting on the bench as far as I know. 22 trainer wins is nothing to scoff at after all. Sure, it's not a top score at, as of this moment. That belongs to Phyllis at 23.5, but it's still reasonably, reasonably close and in second place right now. What can I say? Both Raticate and Fero are very solid Pokemon that only have two forms to them. And there's very little issue other than trying to cover a lot of different typings that are keeping them from staying on the team for good. Just like the fact that I like Machop and his evolutions, but I'm unlikely to have one for this team since, well, we didn't start with a Charmander, which means I don't need a little something extra to deal with the occasional rock types. Have I mentioned I wish we could carry more than six at a time? Darn, was kind of hoping that lucky confusion would mean we'd get just a little more experience there. It's not that big of an issue, but still, would have been nice to see. Huh? 
I wonder how all the wild Pokémon go about getting healed when we knock them around like this. Do they go into the Pokémon Center themselves at some point, or is there some mystical healing thing that only wild Pokémon are allowed to do? Again? A question that will never be answered because I'm thinking too hard about things that don't actually matter all that much. And with that, we're done grinding! Next clip, we're taking on the gym and probably going to stadium for another bit of red versus blue.